Joining us now to discuss foreign policy expert and the Grand Marshal of the Israel Day Parade, Harley Lippman, also joining us back again, former CIA covert operations officer and host of the President's Daily Brief podcast, Mike Baker, and back with us in studio, Benjamin Weingart. And thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, uh, Harley, what's your reaction to that report by Shelby? The question is, why should we care about Ukraine? And there's one answer, very simply. We want to avoid World War III. If Russia wins in Ukraine, they will then feel so emboldened. They've already targeted Poland and the Baltic republics that are members of NATO. And NATO has a clause. There are 50 nations in NATO. And the clause says that if one is attacked, all have to defend that nation. So I don't know of any dictator in history that successfully conquered their neighbor and then just stopped. And this is why I care. I don't want World War III. And lastly, the United States needs to honor its promises. We promised Ukraine we'd give them that, that assistance. And they're willing to do the heavy lifting. They're willing to do the fighting and the dying. So we really need to stand by them. If we don't do this, it will be the apocalypse. We know Speaker Johnson says that funding's not getting through the House unless it is attached to some form of border policy reform mm -hmm. or money here. Mike, what do you make of that? World War III, is that where this leads to? I don't know if you think Putin stops after Ukraine. What's your take? No, I, I, I agree with Harvey 100%. Look, he's not, he's not going to stop there, whether it leads to World War III or not. He certainly has other ambitions. Uh, look, the dithering, sort of the dysfunctional activity in, in Washington, D.C. is is very disappointing. And, and if you just step back and think about it from a pragmatic point of view, for those that are in D.C. saying, well, what's the end game? Why are we constantly spending money? If what you're thinking then is, okay, uh, we get a negotiated settlement, you're not going to get a negotiated settlement unless Ukraine is either on the offensive or holding Russia to a very costly stalemate. They cannot win a war of attrition. So without the West's and, f frankly, without the U.S. support, uh, Putin will win. He will end up in Kyiv. So if that's what those in Washington, D.C. who are holding this up are okay with, then they should have to come out and make that statement, say, yeah, we're fine with Putin taking over Ukraine and then making further moves. Because he has said repeatedly that the greatest disaster of the 20th century was the collapse of the Soviet Union. And he's been trying to rebuild it ever since. And Benjamin, what do you think? Well, I think the, the counter argument that you're going to hear from Washington is we've thrown tens of billions of dollars at the Ukraine-Russia war. We can't point to necessarily any resolution that's coming. We, the president has not clearly articulated what's in our vital national interest and what is the end game that we ultimately expect. We can't track where the billions of dollars flow. So consequently, make the case to the American people that the funding ought to continue and that it ought to be prioritized over having a sovereignty without which, if there's World War III and our borders open, that puts us in even further peril. So that's a question that has to be answered, I think, by the defenders of the funding bill here. Well, we're going to see how that shapes up here in the House. Uh, President Biden putting some pressure on Speaker Johnson there. Mike Baker, Harley Littman, gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, you stick around.